So this is what I'm eating for lunch slash dinner. Straight culture is just eating hungry man dinners. What is up, Crackhead Nation? It's your girl, Princess Galaxy, and today I'm gonna be talking mad shit. I'm just kidding. Today, <laughs> today I'm gonna be talking about K-pop concerts that I missed out on and that I would've went to when I was younger, but I was too young and my mom was like, you can't go to Korea by yourself and you're like 17, so. So before I start this video, I just wanna thank you guys for almost 8,000 subscribers. I am honestly very grateful. I know everyone that watches the videos and comments every week, I, every week, girl, can I speak English? every week and i just want to thank you so much for just subscribing being interested in me and what i have to say because i do have interesting things to say just like today all right first we're gonna start with exolution exolution is a k-pop concert by the amazing iconic exo it is their second tour and it ran from march 7 2015 to march 20th 2016. so it was like a whole year long and that's pretty normal for tours and oh my god sometimes i just imagine like now when I was a fan back in 2015, I was like, eh, you know, whatever. I only cared about like, you know, being horny and reading fan fiction. But now I'm just like, oh my God, like that must've been so hard on their bodies. And also like EXO was kind of like in their prime during this era, like during the Exodus era and everything. So it's just like intense, like very, very intense for them probably. So the reason why I really wanted to go to this concert was for a few reasons. One, because I was a huge XOL, overdose of my first comeback. Exolution is one of my favorite concerts and a concert I really want to see so badly, mainly because of the VCR, which in K-pop that basically means like the the transitions and the intros and like the video that they show you during like transitioning between stages and things like that. So the VCR was literally like kind of a meme like it was kind of like crappy but it was also iconic because like they're all using their powers and then like when you're watching it it's like you hear the fans screaming when like uh their favorite members come up it's like oh my god bacon oh my god lay like it's just so iconic i love it it's uh, just this. also el dorado so iconic as well when they they bring out those little lightsaber looking things and like they start swinging it around and then you know they got the jackets on they're like gold and it's just the energy is so fucking high like i love it it's amazing also i have a quick story time with this as well so when exo was coming to america for the first time it was on this tour and 2015 2016 i was probably 16 or 17 when they announced this and i asked my mom because they had a chicago date they only had three dates in america la new york chicago pretty standard for k-pop especially like in the 2010s late 2010s and i asked my mom i was like mom please can i go see exo and she's like um no you can't and also like what if you get shot you never know and i'm like well damn like you need to stop watching the news because you be paranoid. <laughs> I love you mom, but I'm just like, what? That was so random. Like, I know Chicago, but like chill. And then I asked my friend and she was like, mm, I don't really want to like spend my money on EXO. I don't really like EXO because she was like more of a super junior girl. And I'm like, okay, Mr. Simple. So basically I wasn't able to go and then I cried myself to sleep the day that they were in Chicago and no one got shot. Nothing even happened because guess what? They got security, so thanks. Next is the 21 All or Nothing Tour by 21, like I just said. So this tour was from March 1st to October 17th of 2014. So it was a good stretch as well, and it was 21's last tour. And the reason why I really wanted to see this tour was not only because I was such a huge black jack, I just wanted the whole experience. Crush was my first K-pop album that I ever bought, and it's just so special to me. I still have it in the living room, but in, with my K-pop shrine, <laughs> because I'm an addict. <laughs> I love this tour, mainly because of the aesthetics that was associated with it. It was just kind of like galactic, um, you know, space goddess vibes. As you know, Princess Galaxy, I love a good space theme. Can you tell I was on Tumblr in 2014 and wanted the galaxy leggings or no? <laughs> like, can you tell? 
can you tell? And the best part about 21, not only is their stage presence, because a lot of like, I'm not sure, I think 21 is considered third gen, second or third gen. I, I'm so bad at, can someone please send me a chart? Cause I have no idea like what generations are what. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so basically my favorite part about this tour and that I wanted to see so badly was not only just having the Black Hack Jack experience with the light stick, cause I love light sticks. Like I'm literally so addicted, but also because CL is my bias. And at the time CL and Minzy were my faves and I loved CL's solo section where she performed like the baddest female first. It was like horns so like and then she was like, Man, that's the geezy bit. Uh, what the fuck was that? Anyways. Man, not the geezy bit. We're on my bed, girl. Sad. And then she gets into mental breakdown. Man, tada, boo, get. Man, boo, ba, 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 ba. Oh, I need to go to karaoke and sing that song. So next is the FX Dimension Four, which is FX's first and last solo concert. This concert ran from January 9th, 2016 to November 3rd, 2016. Like I said, it was FX's first concert since their debut, AKA 2009. So they were a group literally for so long and they got their first solo concert like Hold on. Okay, I don't know, maybe like seven years. So it took like almost 10 years. So the main reason why I want to see this concert is because FX literally did not get any promotion when they were with SM. Like they got the bare minimum. It was like, oh, you got like an album. They didn't really have that many albums. They didn't have that many mini albums. And it just kind of pissed me off when like, I'm not trying to discredit newer fans, but like when you see like newer groups and like they're getting so much, you know, from their companies and like they might not be treated like amazing because you know, it's K-pop, you know, they have um, problems sometimes with management of artists. But a lot of times they complain, they're like, um, you forgot this person in, in the watch in the VCR. Oh, you didn't spell this person's name right or something like that. And it's just like, how about not getting a fucking tour? How about literally not even getting the basic, the bare minimum for your fandom? How about being so fucking mistreated that, you know, the members literally have to ask fans like, please, please do this. Like, please support us. Like, we will literally not get funny if you don't support us. Like, it kind of felt like FX was like, it kind of felt like FX wasn't really an SM group. It felt like they were a group to like maybe like a Nubu company or like maybe a company that's like not as known. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It just really felt like FX was just so mistreated. And like when you've gone through that with like a group that you care about, it's just like when you hear other people complain, it's like they get so much. And it's just like FX didn't get nothing. They, they get merch. They didn't get any bare minimum shit. You know what I mean? So that's just my quick tangent about that topic so the reason main reason why i want to see this is because of red light which is one of fx's best tracks and off of one of fx's best albums personally i think red light is their best album period next is probably electric shock and then third is four walls i will stand by that till the day i die but they have a solid discography either way and also Luna has this cute little solo when they perform Red Light and it's kind of like a rock version of it. That's what it says on Wikipedia. And I guess it's technically true, but like she starts singing, she's like, and then like everyone in the crowd is like, yes. And then like, oh, I just would have died to be there. This would have been so iconic. Literally this whole list is iconic. Just iconic moments at K-pop concerts. Number four, or as the Spanish say, cuatro, oh my God, I'm so sorry, is Girls' Generation's second Japanese tour concert, Girls and Keys. So I'm not a huge zone. I don't really talk about Girls' Generation. I respect them as an older group because, you know, they've been through so much and, you know, their K-pop history, whether you like it or not, um, Girls' Generation is and was the moment. So when it came to Girls' Generation, I don't know how I found this, but it was probably like in YouTube Recommended a long, long time ago, back when the YouTube Recommended section was not a complete piece of garbage. No offense, YouTube, please don't demonetize me. <laughs> 
I found this during, in my recommended. That's usually how most K-pop journeys start. And I literally watched this entire concert footage. And let me tell you, the intro to this is the most iconic concert intro I've ever seen in my life. Literally, it starts off with the, like, you know, the intro, VCR or whatever. And then they start performing, but they're not actually there. They're holographic. And then like the hologram for like the screen or whatever, like in the center, I'll show you the video. It's probably B-roll right here. Like they, they start fading away and then they come up from the ground and they're like, I can't anything, he done made the glass wall, Mr. No Ella, ka, 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 ka. I'm like, bitch, I'm losing my fucking mind. What the fuck? Oh my God, this is so good. Oh my God, so iconic. Like, that is what a concert should be. That's what the hype should be about. You know what I'm saying? Like. Who's gonna do it like that? You know, that's like Britney Spears stuff. That's like iconic pop girl stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so fucking iconic. So I will literally, I want to see it so bad just for that. Next is my last one and it is the Dream Concert. If you guys aren't really like into K-pop, you probably might not know about the Dream Concert, but if you're like a K-pop, maybe like an average stand, you should know about it. So basically the Dream Concert has been around since 1995, which makes it 27 years old this year. So it could be my big sister, but I like to make everything about me, so we're just gonna move on from that. Like I said, it's been a thing since 1995 and it was created by the Korean Entertainment Producers Association. And it's basically just a huge concert where like tens of K-pop's biggest popular acts just go and perform. I love the Dream Concert because it's like a multi-stands dream or nightmare depending on where you sit <laughs> and also i really just want to be involved in that because when you watch dream concert footage you want to be there you know what i mean even if it's not like a group you like really love i just love seeing like the fans excitement i love seeing them in their sections rooting on their faves lighting up their lights like screaming so fucking loud the fan chants like oh, it's so good like I have to go to Dream Concert. If they have it next year, like, because they're still, because apparently this year they're having it in July again, like last year, I would really love to go next year. Hopefully Korea will be more open and more vaccines are available to them and things like that. But um, in a facetious way, I guess the Dream Concert is basically just like flexing for fandoms 101, <laughs> which I love because it's all about the fans, you know? It's like, honestly, like, I don't even watch it for the performance. Like, obviously I watch it, like if it's like EXO. Last time EXO was there was 2017. I'm so fucking old, but like, I enjoy the fans more than like seeing the artists perform. So that's basically it. I love concerts. Like I said, this is the whole channel basically about K-pop concerts and I can't wait to go back to them soon. And I wanna know what are concerts that you guys have probably missed out on or like you weren't able to go to, but like you really wanted to go to. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, map of the soul, map of the soul, map of the soul. Stuff that hasn't happened yet, okay? <laughs> so like maybe that was a concert that like you wanted to go to, but you didn't have enough money or like you didn't like, you know, have the ability to get there or things like that. I don't wanna make it sad. I just wanna, you know, make it fun. Cry for more crackhead K-pop, K-pop concert content. <laughs> that is a tongue twister, girl. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Keep up with me on my socials and I love you. Mwah. I mean, have a good day. This, I, there was one chicken breast that came with this, like another one, and I'm pretty sure it was just a sponge that they cosplayed to look like chicken.